tell you. In general, small creatures in the Amazon can be even scarier than huge monsters. Look, this is Kandiru. And it loves men who think the world is a toilet. It likes to eat them. If a man comes to the shore of the Amazon to relieve himself, there is a chance that this little creature will penetrate directly into his urethra up the stream. You know the way, don't you? The Kandiru is so small that it easily climbs up into the urethra or even into the bladder and feeds on the surrounding cells and blood. It spreads its gills, on which there are thorns. These thorns cause small but painful wounds. Did we say that this is dangerous for men? It's a joke. It is dangerous for everyone and is quite capable of getting into the body of a woman as well. And you can only remove the fish operationally. It is worth admitting that there is almost no reliable evidence of such a peculiar attack on people. Only scattered data and, of course, rumors. Usually, the Candiro parasitizes fish, takes them into their gill slits, spreads its own gills there, mutilates the host, and drinks its blood. Vampire fish. There is no exact data on the danger to humans, but it's still not worth the risk, don't you agree? The most famous dangerous fish of the Amazon is, of course, the piranha. At first glance, it looks pretty nondescript. Gray, green color, rounded body. Except that the expression of the muzzle is some kind of aggressive, angry. But it is one of the most dangerous predators on the planet, at least in its ecological niche. To be in a pond where piranhas live is like falling into a bear trap that not only captures, but also eats its victim. The main advantage of these voracious fish is the quantity. Several dozen fish can live in a flock, and each of them is voracious and incredibly aggressive. Fish are not considered intelligent creatures, but piranhas have surprisingly effective attack tactics. They pounce on the prey of the whole pack and try to surround it from all sides. Each fish acts autonomously, but their habits make the interaction of piranhas during an attack very effective. The fish instantly approaches the target, tears off a piece of flesh directly from the live prey, and then swims off to swallow the food. During this short moment, the place of one piranha is taken by another, which stings directly into the area of the previous lesion. One fish spins less than a second to attack. And since the fish surrounded the prey and even line up in a live queue to tear off a piece of it, it turns out that a flock of these creatures attacks virtually continuously. Do piranhas scare you? Or do you dream of having them in your home aquarium? Let us know in the comments. For its size, the piranha has very strong jaws. They can even snack on a bamboo tube, which is so large in diameter that it barely fits in the fish's mouth. It's as if you could have a snack at your table you're sitting at. In addition, piranhas have rather large and sharp triangular-shaped teeth, which are ideal for tearing off pieces of meat. Even one fish can cause significant inconvenience to relatively large animals, since the wound will bleed profusely after the bite. But a dozen piranhas are already a threat to a medium-sized young deer. And a big pack is capable of coping with anyone at all. Probably the scales of adult caimans are inaccessible to them because of their strength and thickness but an anaconda will be eaten by a flock of piranhas in six or seven minutes. And a cow that weighs half a ton will be gnawed to death in a quarter of an hour. By the way, piranhas are able to swim into the ocean, although this fish spawns only in fresh water. They usually lie in wait for their prey in muddy water, but at the same time, they can comfortably exist both at great depth and in shallow water. Usually they still hunt other fish, and to look for places where they can really be a lot of play, these creatures have monstrous appetites. But mammals should also be wary of meeting such a predator. At the moment, not a single fatal outcome of a piranha attack on a person has ever been recorded. But who knows? 
Maybe there was just no one to tell about it. Moreover, sometimes the fish attacks a person, especially if it disturbs the flock. Here's another reason not to go into the Amazon water. Scared? So we're kind of uneasy too. Just promise me that if you go to travel to the Amazon, you will remain as careful as possible and do not go into the water and do not touch or even approach the local fauna, okay? It may seem that a piranha is a terminator that destroys anything at all and is not afraid of anyone. But you already know the secret of the Amazon, don't you? Monsters live here precisely because each predator has its own dangerous enemy, which forces species to constantly compete, becoming stronger, more dangerous, and scarier. So piranhas also have their own hunter. Moreover, the fish is not going to large shoals. It does not need it. We're talking about the giant arapaima, one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. Imagine a pike or perch as long as an adult lion. That's what kind of creature we're talking about. The most common arapaima reaches seven feet or two meters in length, but most larger specimens are not often found. For example, it is about 10 feet long, about three meters. And according to unconfirmed reports, there are also real giants. A river fish over 14 feet long, over 4.5 meters, and weighing like a small motorcycle. Of course, if piranhas can attack livestock, it is obvious that simple superiority in size will not take this predator. Arapaima has a number of superpowers that make this fish an excellent hunter who feels confident even in this green hell. Of course, aggressive nature, great speed, powerful jaws, all this is in the arsenal of this fish. But the main thing is its armor. It is difficult to find a fish with stronger scales, about 10 times stronger than bone. At the same time, the scaly cover is layered, which creates a kind of natural chain mail of sorts. Arapaima can withstand the assault of a whole flock of piranhas and go on the counterattack, destroying the enemy. Oh yes, that's not all. Arapaima can breathe atmospheric air. Therefore, it likes to hunt in shallow water. Even if she is above water, it'll be able to survive. Probably the opportunity to breathe oxygen dissolved in the air appeared to the, due to the fact that the Arapaima settles in small backwaters where plants and other fish already drink all the oxygen from the water. Arapaima does not have lungs, but there are special tissues that are located in the pharynx and on the swim bladder. An arapaima floats to the surface every 5 to 20 minutes and takes a breath, the characteristic sound of which can be heard from afar. And to understand that, it is better not to approach this reservoir. It is unlikely that the arapaima is dangerous to humans, but if it catches even small birds out of the water, who knows? Against the background of many of our other heroes, the Brazilian bird eater will seem like a cutie to you. At least because for an adult and healthy person who does not suffer from allergies, the venom of this spider does not pose an excessive threat. Although, of course, it causes terrible pain. I mean, what can you do without that? In the Amazon basin, everything causes terrible pain. The toxin that the bird eater secretes is not strong enough to stop a person's heart for one reason. It is not intended to protect the spider from predators, but it's for hunting. Such poisons are designed against small animals, on which they should act as quickly as possible. The venom of the bird eater copes with this task perfectly. But the main weapon of this huge spider is geoaggression. He does not weave a web on which he sits for hours and waits for prey. Instead, the bird eater goes out to patrol the surrounding area to actively catch its prey with powerful paws. Some individuals can reach a diameter of almost a foot, 30 centimeters. This makes it one of the largest spider species in the world. They can grow to such gigantic dimensions only in the Amazon. In an area with an extremely high content of oxygen and moisture in the air. These sizes, combined with eight strong paws and venomous mandibles, allow spider to hunt not only insects, but also to catch small rodents, frogs, 
lizards, and birds. The bird eaters hunting of birds is probably the most impressive sight associated with this spider. That's why it got its name. But in the Amazon basin, of course, there are spiders that are dangerous to humans. I mean, could it really be otherwise? In fact, there are a lot of them here. And there are dozens of arthropod species that are dangerous to us. But especially, it is necessary to tell about a wandering spider. Unlike bird eaters, they do not build a den in burrows or crevices in trees. But they don't weave a big web either. In accordance with their name, these spiders prefer a nomadic lifestyle and constantly walk through the jungle in search of prey. They are not very big, but they have a very dangerous poison. The most amazing thing about these spiders is their generosity. Perhaps there is no other spider in the world that injects as much venom as this one during a bite. The reason for this phenomenon is difficult to understand. On the one hand, the poison of the wandering Amazon spider is twice as toxic as the poison of the Black Widow. That is, it poses a danger not only to humans, but also, for example, to an elephant. On the other hand, it is resource intensive to produce such a powerful toxin, so the spider has to hunt more often. Well, maybe this predator just loves reliability. Unlike the bird eater, it often crawls into human habitation. It does not attack first, but it is quite easy to provoke an attack. There are hundreds of spider species in Brazil, but this one accounts for 50% of all human bites. The venom of a wandering spider is a neurotoxin that attacks the nervous system, causing terrible pain, attacking the heart, and stopping the work of the lungs. 